So one of the things I'd like to do as we prepare to go on this trip together, to put the checklist into place in every operating room in the state of South Carolina for every patient, every time, is show you the trip that we took with the WHO checklist from September 2006 to December of 2009. And the reason why I'm doing this, because if you listen to the cultures as we have it laid out, it sounds like that's a long time. But to do the change that we want to help you do in your operating rooms, it is the blink of an eye. Let me show you how the checklist changed in those three years in the work that we did with the WHO. So this was one of the very first versions of the checklist. It's a simple list laid out. It's vertical. It had the first versions of the, the little check boxes, not terribly sophisticated, and watch how it changed. Color came to it. Boxes came. The words keep changing back and forth as we try and figure out the right way to say the things that we were trying to help people to make sure happened in their operating rooms. The layout changes more. The words change more. Things show up on the checklist that later disappear. Another change, the first one that was good enough to get the WHO logo on the top of it. Now, this shift from vertical to horizontal with three parallel checklists is an interesting one and actually came from the initial trial of the checklist in Canada. Um, and a Canadian designer actually gave us the sideways checklist. That, uh, that we continue to use to today. And then this was the first official version of the checklist as it was released, the first edition, in June of 2008. And then the version that exists today, which has changed some in the wording, and clearly in the color scheme, but the basic layout and the basic 19-item content has not changed significantly. Now, one of the very first things that we did in trying to spread the checklist in the United States was to work with the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, and we modified this checklist significantly to build in things that we knew hospitals in the United States were working on and struggling with, and you can see if you look at this and read it carefully, that it adds some of the skip measures that, w that everyone has worked on so hard over the last couple of years. And then from the IHI checklist, we actually have been working with the leadership group of this project in the state of South Carolina to further customize the checklist to the state of South Carolina. And one of the things that you'll notice here that's significantly different is a focus that's now placed on what we believe are two of the key elements of this checklist in enhancing communication and teamwork, and that is briefing and debriefing. So important that they now get their own sections and their own title. And there's one more piece here that we have added together, the leadership group in the state of South Carolina, and that is the statement at the bottom of the middle column where it says, Surgeon state, does anybody have any concerns? If you see something that concerns you during this case, please speak up. That whole concept, that idea of opening up the room for comment from all of the team members has actually been kicking around surgery for, I would say, the last 10 years. This is the first time that it's been incorporated formally into a checklist. 